welcome back to my channel. Today you're watching a video where I show you how to pre-flight a Cessna 152 or a 172. So these two aircraft, the 152 and the 172 are extremely similar and the pre-flight procedure is almost identical. The 152 is a 172 which is a little smaller and minus two seats. I just came back home from a flight and I recorded the pre-flight procedure so that you guys can see and if you are interested in being a pilot, you are very likely going to be training on a 152 or 172 because it is an amazing training aircraft. And now that you've watched this video, you will be one step ahead of your flight training process. Before we get started, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and hit the notification bell right next to it because I have so many amazing videos planned for you guys and I don't know if you guys noticed but in this week I posted three videos which I've never done before and I have so many more videos coming out. So hit that subscribe button and I will have a lot of my pilot life videos linked everywhere in the iCard, in the down bar, everywhere. That being said, let's get on to the video. Come on! Today I am flying a Cessna 152. So I will be showing you how to pre-flight a 152. The procedure is pretty much the same for a 172 as well and that's my dispatch. So I'm going to leave it there for a bit now. Like I was saying the procedure is pretty much the same so this will work for both the aircrafts. To get started I take down the hops and tack time first. Once I take this down I can put my dispatch away. And then I grab my iPad. My iPad is usually on my kneeboard. Oh wow, it's super hard to do with this one-handed. So hold on, let me get this out. So I have my iPad in the Sporty's kneeboard. I think this is called the Trifold one. I'm not sure. But this is an amazing product for pilots. I highly recommend this for anybody who is flying. You can just strap this onto your knee and it does not budge. I'm using a checklist on my iPad. I usually use a physical one, but today I'm using an electronic copy on my checklist. It is the Checkmate checklist for the Cessna 152. This is my favorite checklist that I always use. I also have a physical copy, but this is what we're using today. I highly recommend using a checklist. I know it can be repetitive and you will remember every single procedure, but there could be a time when you forget it, you miss one thing and it might just get you in trouble. So even whether you know it or not know it, just open up a checklist and use it. That is what the examiners want to see, so just do it. It'll help you a lot, trust me. The first thing I do is look for the documents, the arrow. So I'm checking for the airworthiness, the registration, the POH and the weight and balance. I see the airworthiness in the registration there, the POH is in the back and the weight and balance is with me. So we're good on the documents of the aircraft. Now I'm going to be starting the pre-flight. I just want to let you guys know this is just me showing you how I do it, just the overview. Okay, this is not an in-depth tutorial. Alright, let's go. Fuel on. Check. Control lock. Off. There we go. Next, master on. Alright. Flaps down. Okay. Beacon on. Now lights on. Beacon is flashing. Okay. That is good. So I'm going to turn off the master now. Alright, initial checklist complete. It's getting windy, the wind is picking up, so my flight is going to be windy. And now I have to check the fuel, so let me show you how I do that. Fuel quantity and quality, we'll be checking both of them. We use the fuel strainer to check the quality of the fuel, to see if there are any impurities, any dirt, debris in the fuel, or any water in the fuel. So we drain the fuel and check for all those things. And the color of the fuel that we use is blue, it is 100 low lead to look lightly blue and I'll show you. This is what it looks like. It is free of impurities and of water so that is good for us and can you guys see the blue color in it? That's the blue I was talking about. Now that it looks like this, we're golden. And now we'll do the same thing on the other wing and check for impurities 
on that tank too. Next I'm going to be checking the fuel quantity which means how much fuel is in the aircraft. For that I'll be using this thing. It tells you how much fuel is there in gallons. The fuel tank is in the wing and to get there I'm going to step on this and then this to get there. Okay. Okay, now I'm on top of the aircraft. This is the wing and this is what it looks like. So, we're going to be opening this and checking how much fuel is there through this. I'm going to take the fuel cap off, use the fuel stick, put it in and cover the top with a finger and lift it up to get the fuel. I know I'm holding it awkwardly here. It is because I'm trying to balance myself on top of the aircraft, holding it and record with the other hand. So that's why. And this is how you should be holding it. And I just check a couple of times each tank just to get the accurate reading. Okay, so turns out that I only have about 7 to 8 gallons of fuel, so I'm going to need some fuel before I go. So I'll grab some fuel and then leave. I'll finish the rest of my pre-flight right now. Next, I like to do a walk around check, which starts from the left door. Okay, we start from here onwards. So we are going to be checking for everything around the aircraft. I'm starting off with the static board. We found ahead of the left door and this is what it looks like. We want to make sure that the hole is free and not clogged. Now we're going to look at the pitot tube. This is the pitot tube and this is what it looks like. It has two holes. The one in the front here is the ram air inlet hole. Make sure that this again is free of clogs. Once you're certain that it's good, let's move on to the drain hole which is on the back. Ensure that this is also free of clogs. If there's any water or moisture collected in here, it'll be drained out of the drain hole. That is why this is there. This is the stall warning horn, which you can check by sucking on it. Put a handkerchief on it and suck on it, and then it'll make the stall warning horn noise. If it does, then you're good to go. While you're walking over, check the surface of the wing for any nicks and dents and cracks, and check the light also. And after that, we're moving on to the aileron. We want to check the inside of the aileron. We want to make sure that these nuts are all in and secure. There are three sets of these four nuts. Make sure all those are secure. We also want to make sure that this is good. And anytime you're putting your hand in here, make sure you hold on to the aileron with one hand. Otherwise, if the wind blows and this closes in, it could chop off your fingers and we don't want that. So always make sure to hold on to the aileron with one hand before you put a hand through this. Next towards the left of the ailerons are the flaps and I haven't taken the tie down because it's a little windy so I'll just left it on. I'll take it off before I leave. So with the flaps I want to make sure that there's a little bit of motion. You see that it is right on it. And I also want to make sure that there is a little bit of motion here. And that's it. Next, we are moving on to the elevator and the horizontal stabilizer. This is the elevator. We're making sure the control surfaces are free and there is no restriction. And then we have to check the insides of this also but you guys won't be able to see it because it's super sunny outside and it's dark in there but once you're done checking this you can move on to the rudder so that's the rudder and here's one thing i want you to know do not touch this part don't move it using this part just hold on top like so and move it a little bit if you want to and check right here Make sure the motion is free, make sure everything is aligned and looking good. Next, onto the other side. We have the elevator here as well and an extra trim tab that is attached here. Make sure both of these are okay and we again check the insides of this and then we move on to the other side of the wing. We check the aileron and the flaps again, just like we did on the other side. 
Also make sure to check the tire. Make sure there are no bald spots and no threads showing. Also make sure there is the quarter pin right there, that pin that you see, make sure that's in it. Also make sure that the brake disc and the brake pad look good, they're not worn out. If that looks good, then you're pretty much done, except also check for the brake fluid. This is the reddish brown fluid, if it's around the tire, then there is brake fluid leaking. We don't want to be flying that, we want to get it checked. So make sure there is no brake fluid leak. And if it's so, then you're good to go. I forgot to film checking the oil and draining the fuel. We do it inside the cowling. And we also check the nose wheel gear. Make sure the tire is good the same way we check the other tire. Just make sure this is good. And here, make sure there is four finger space in between. Just like you saw with my hand. If that looks good, just go ahead and check the exhaust there are no cracks and also check the air inlet that is the air inlet and make sure the filter is clean so the air can get in and then we're looking at the props make sure the props are free of dense cracks and nicks also check the alternator belt it has good tension it is not too loose and also check the insides just check it to finish your pre-flight Fold these parts to the back and it'll look something like this. Once it looks like this, I put it on my knee right here. You know what? Actually, on the right side. And I strap this to the back. And once it is all strapped, I won't be able to move it at all and it won't fall off. So I will be pretty good to go i usually have a pen right here which i take it off and write so that's pretty good mixture full rich throttle slide prime brakes clear prop all for today's video if you like this video make sure you give this video a big thumbs up and also consider subscribing i will have more of my aviation videos everywhere in the down bar and in the i card so you can check it out and it'll help you out in your aviation journey and i'm also doing a motivation monday series where i put out aviation motivation videos every monday so stay tuned for that and you might just be very, very inspired to become a pilot. The last video where I answered all your questions will be right here. And another aviation video will be right here. I will see you in my next video. Until then, signing off, Lightning Girl. Bye.